So moving on now to brown hair and this time we're looking at some curly hair. Um, the area I'm really going to concentrate on to demonstrate how I will draw curls in brown hair is just down here where all the separate curls can be clearly seen and then I'm going to talk to you a little bit about how um, these shadows around the jaw affect how we draw the hair as well. So just the same way as with um, the last subject I'm going to use the embossing tool particularly to pick out these highlights because we're working with a lot more dark colours it really is easy to lose these and these are absolutely the thing that define the shapes of the curls so I'm being a bit more precise than I was last time still quite loose but I'm definitely following the direction I want those to be and thinking more about the placement so where they're going to stop so just in this, looking at this curl individually here, there's an area there where it's darker and we don't want the embossing tool to push into those areas. So I'm taking it to there and then starting it again here. Similarly, I'm going to use it to take some of these, make some of these longer marks. And of course one or two random ones, you can even have some curls going off. That's the beauty of curly hair is that apart from these little areas where you need it to define a, a, a specific curl, you can, go, you can go a bit wild, you can have hairs that kind of go any direction they please. So again I'm going to put in some embossed areas here and then the point where this curl there's light reflected off this area that's coming towards us and then it turns, the curl turns direction and we're going to mark in that area too. So it's almost like a fanning out from a point. Okay, so I'm just going to now go in with maybe a brown ochre and try marking some of these darker areas, so the bits where the embossing tool didn't go first of all. And underneath the curls where the um, the hair meets the jaw and the cheek they're also going to be quite dark areas so we can start marking those in. I've on the underdrawing drawn a curl, this curl that comes across here just a little bit of artistic license there and made it into more of a, a chunky curl instead of individual little little ones just so just aesthetically really, it looks better to be one curl there than a scribble of curls. And that again is the beauty of curly hair, when you're doing your original line drawing you can, you can change it around a bit, it's not going to make you think it's not that person. So each one of these curls is like a little mini bridge and the point where it's nearest the light is, is light and then the valleys are dark. That's the effect we want to think about. So you can almost make your pencil do those shapes when you're working. You can just bring in a line to suggest that too. And try and put in some of these dark areas behind the curls now. Again, not, not try not to keep too much of a solid dark area, breaking it up every now and then with hairs, they can just be randomly placed, you can even use the embossing tool again, add some in, just to break it up so it's not completely solid area. And when you've got long hair like this, you're going to usually get an area where it is very dark behind the jaw and the cheek. It might benefit you to work up some of that cheek shadow first, but usually it's a... If it's this dark, you can afford almost to make it a line and then work your colours over onto the jaw as another stage. And where you're going into areas where it's a valley, like this, there'll be the darkest point where it's furthest away from you, then try and make 
the, hair, the individual hairs that are coming out from that point, some long, some short, vary them, fetch some right across, the same way we did when we were looking at the spider effect on the crown of the head of the blonde boy. I'm just going to um, put in a little bit of a, a yellowy tone, just to start introducing a little bit of colour as well. It might not be what you think of as the predominant tone uh, colour rather on this little girl's hair but it usually helps just to have um, a yellow, some sort of goldeny tone in most hair to begin with. The same way with all the different skin tones we started off with a creamy colour, it's just like an under, under colour. I'm going to use a reddish brown, similar way, extending out of these dark areas just with varying different lengths. Some which go right through. Always remembering to add the colour I'm working with to those dark areas, building up the shadow so we've not got a temptation to use black and we're using all the same colours we're using in the hair so it just brings everything together. So I'm going to move to a darker brown. We're getting quite close in tone to what we're going to be working as the darkest darks on her curls. This photograph is particularly dark. Actually, if I was doing it as a commission piece, I probably would have used another photograph as well, um, printed out a couple of, you know, added brightness to it so it's a couple of shades lighter just so I could see more definition to some of these and perhaps a better indication of colour because it's quite a dark photograph it's hard to tell you can start seeing where some of those embossed lines I put in are and it's particularly useful when they appear like that against an area of dark shadow just to help break it up once you, once you see them come in you can work in between them like that enhance where they're going use even a bit of blue in this area because it really is practically black. And the darker you have behind the curls the more it'll, and in the darkest areas of the curls the more it'll make them stand out. If this little girl didn't have quite so many, much of a red tone to her hair, if it was real black hair, I would be using a lot more blue. Blue, even in the highlights, pale blue on black hair. But this little girl's got such warm red tones. Coming through it.
In fact, going back to what I just said about black hair, black hair actually is one of the only ones where I wouldn't use a yellow at the beginning. I would wait and see if it needed it on jet black hair. tiny curls like this one that's appearing down there you wouldn't even necessarily need to put in the individual hairs you could it's not a solid you'd still follow work following the line with individual strokes but it's such a tiny area that it's almost like a like a solid color going round just picking out highlights and low lights The more you push these these areas of dark back, the more the light areas are forced to look like they're coming forwards, and that's what you're trying to achieve. I'm just going to come in with purple now. Just we've used it in all the rest of the areas of shadow on the face. And in the areas of shade, you really can't see any definition between any difference between where the curl is and where the background shadow is. So you can afford to be really quite dark with those shadowed areas of curl. I'm just going to bring in a tiny bit of black. Now it's just a top coat of that dark. from that the way you would treat a curl and it would be the same no matter what color the hair obviously you'd be using different colors in the light parts but the, the technique is the same so that's more or less how I would treat curls <laughs> 